Hey everybody, um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to make a digital sketch for the uh, first composition for the overlapping shapes um, part of this week's assignment. Um, with this assignment and most of the assignments in this class, the most important phase is really developing good sketches. So please pay attention to the number of sketches that I'm requesting for you to upload to Canvas. Um, Take your time. Make sure that you are also drawing your sketches to scale. So the final version of this assignment needs to be six by nine inches. Um, so go ahead and make all of your sketches that same size, six by nine inches. Um, if you're uncomfortable with Photoshop or you prefer drawing with pen and paper or pencil and paper, um, you're more than welcome to work in your sketchbooks. Just keep in mind for this assignment, um, I do want to see all of your sketches so that I can give you feedback on which sketches are stronger um, before you get started. One important thing that I should mention also is that because you will be cutting your assignment by hand, you don't want any of the lines in your sketch to be too much thinner than this line right here. Um, you can see that a lot of my lines are quite thicker. Um, anything thinner than that is going to be very hard for you to cut out potentially with your exacto blade um, so keep the process in mind as you are developing your sketches as well uh, make sure you label all of your sketches with a number for me one two three four five six seven um, however many there are so that way when I'm looking at your sketches I can say I think number one is a really good sketch or number two is really strong but I would do such and such different um, all right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up a new file, um, and I'm going to make my file the size of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper so I can print it out easily. So I've just selected that there. Okay, next I am working with my uh, <clears throat> rectangle tool and I am going to draw a rectangle that is 6 inches by 9 inches because that is the size of the uh, composition that you should work with for this particular project. So I'm making sure that it is empty inside, no fill. Um, and I'm giving it just a like very thin border here, um, only like one point in black so I can see where the boundary of this form is. Uh, next I'm just going to retrace this shape uh, and creating a new layer. I'm going to select the opposite and fill that frame in with white paint so I've got a viewfinder. This will just help me have um, a sense of what the boundaries of the uh, composition will be when I'm quickly using my rectangle and shape tools, which I will do next. So uh, this is the ellipse tool and you see you can just quickly draw a shape, any shape. Um, and then up here you can play around with the perimeter, the thickness of the line. Um, you could change that to a different color if you want. I'm leaving it in black. I'm making it nice and thick to start um, because uh, keep in mind you have to cut out these shapes. So any shape that's too thin is going to be really challenging for you to cut out using your X-Acto blade. Um, and now I'm just playing around with different shapes, layering them, duplicating them, and trying to find a composition um, that creates the feeling of shapes that are overlapping in space. Um, so the main objective is when you're finished with this composition, um, if you work digitally and you print it out and then you pin it to a wall and you stand back uh, like 10 feet or so, 
the composition that you create should have the appearance of some kind of space. There should be the illusion of depth that you've created using the shapes that you are adding to your composition. You can work with any kind of shape you want. You could draw free form organic shapes. Of course, you can use um, geometric shapes, rectilinear shapes. Uh, the shapes that you use are totally up to you, but remember, you want to try to keep the process in mind as you're working um, because whatever shapes you draw, you will have to cut out. Um, so if you draw a shape that's too small, too thin, um, or very, very detailed, it will be harder for you to then use your X-Acto blade to cut out those shapes. Um, in order to make a good composition, you want to think about activating all areas of the space. Maybe you intentionally leave a corner or a specific area of the picture plane empty, but try to think about ways that you can engage a viewer's eye around the composition. Um, so move your shapes around in Photoshop and think about different places that you can move them or vary the scale. Um, so maybe you have a really big shape and then you have really super small shapes in there. Um, think about all the different ways that you can add variety so that the composition overall um, is interesting for a viewer to look at. If it's too static, um, you're less likely to hold a viewer's interest. Um, but maybe that's your intention for a different type of work. Maybe you want to communicate stability or a sense of calm, so you think about incorporating other compositional devices um, to achieve that goal. Uh, so you can see I'm just playing around with my shapes still and trying to get a composition um, that I think really communicates this idea of overlapping shapes. Um, like I said in the introduction to this tutorial, making a good sketch is the most important part of this process. What I like about making this sketch in Photoshop is then I can print out my sketch um, just using a regular old printer and then I can cut, um, use that printed paper as a template to cut directly into, which you'll see in the next video that I'm going to make for this class. Um, if you work with your sketchbook and um, or just a scrap piece of paper, you could photocopy your sketch and then work from the photocopies to create your final version that you will use as your template for cutting. Um, another way that you can translate the design from your sketchbook onto the piece of black paper is using tracing paper. So tracing your design um, and then using the tracing paper as a stencil or a guide when you cut into the black paper. Okay, so I, you can see I'm changing the thicknesses. I'm still playing around and moving my different pieces all around the picture plane to try to come up with something that I think is interesting that also satisfies this assignment. So um, I want a composition that looks striking to me, but also one that is in keeping with the parameters. You can play around with filling in the shapes um, or having them be hollow. Um, so there's no one way to approach this particular assignment. You should try to explore different ideas in the different sketches that you come up um, before you start cutting the piece of black paper. So maybe in some sketches your shapes are, you're creating shapes by filling in the shape with a solid color. Maybe in other um, examples you are working with a boundary that has um, varying thicknesses of um, 
the outline of this shape. If all of the shapes in your composition have the same thickness for the outer boundary, it will be very difficult for you to achieve the sensation of space. Um, please do keep that in mind. So having the outline of the forms um, change from thicker to thinner is a good starting place for you to think about creating a design um, that is satisfying the parameters of this assignment. Now, once I've finished making my design, um, I will print it out, take a look at it from far away to see if it works, if there's some feeling of space in um, the composition, uh, if there's some idea of overlapping shapes, um, and then I will continue on and make the rest of my sketches. Um, remember, the first sketch you make for any project, really anything you're working on, is very, very rarely the best sketch or the best idea that you have. That's why it's so important for us to think about doing um, different versions and playing around with different ideas before we commit to just one. Um, so I'm just taking a look at this and kind of comparing it with the design that I made previously. And that's it. Thanks, everybody.